I've been doing school turnaround for a while. I've never been in the 21. And when I've been uh, in a school where I felt like nothing was happening before, um, it was in the 30s. I think they deserve the best. I think Jefferson Parish is the best. And um, uh, I see that parents are excited about it. I'm sure uh, some are uh, a little leery about what's going to go on. but. Um, I think we're blessed with a wonderful principal over there. I had grandchildren in Celerity with Mayor, and now I have grandchildren in Jefferson Parish with Mayor. So we've been through this transition, and it's been a rough transition. In my opinion, there was no structure. Of course, I work in a cafeteria. <laughs> I'm not in the classrooms, but I can see the difference this year. I mean, I can see that there's structure. I can see that things are aligned like they're supposed to be. It was different because like they, they didn't have like a, like a lot of um, consequences to things. We've got kids who went through this lack, complete lack of culture over the past few years and now we're trying to get them corralled and it's hard. The structure of the classrooms are starting to settle. Like they understand, okay, I do have to do my work because on Friday I want to shout out or I want our class to get that 85 percent or I want our class to get the transition award. And we told teachers to build communities inside of their classrooms. If structure is done in a, in a, in a positive environment or and the students understand that you know, this is a loving environment, people care about us, and they care that we learn. They care and they want us to learn. I think if they understand that and that's what's happening in, you know, in our classroom, the possibilities are just endless. I'm used to the celebrity because there are no rules and everything, and kids are just out of place, and they do whatever they want. But here, everything is fixed, and I'm loving it. Because without structure, everything would just fall apart, and we don't want that. Underperforming schools, the expectations have been low. The accountability has been low, not just for kids, but for teachers. Uh, so for me, coming into this, I knew I needed to tackle that culture piece. Woodmere Elementary is really a unique um, but exciting opportunity for us in Jefferson Parish Public Schools because we get to start fresh with the school, fresh leadership, uh, students returning back to us, and I think it's an obligation that we have to do right by these kids. I thought about what are the values I want to instill in kids. I want them to have pride. And I thought about the fact that in a school where the population had dwindled, you know, the, the student numbers had dwindled um, because the community lost faith in the school, I wanted to instill a sense of pride back in the community. P stands for perseverance. The R stands for respect. The I is integrity. The D is discipline. And the E is excellence. That's our values in a nutshell, pride. You know, the whole climate has shifted and eventually that will impact um, the culture because the culture includes the perceptions of the community too. But when you see those things, I think they make um, more of an impact. There are so many things that a principal has to do to lead a successful school, but one of those things that is critically important is engaging parents in a meaningful and authentic way. It's understanding that term parental involvement and then making sure that your actions within the school are really catering to involve parents in, in, a multi, in a variety of ways. Whenever we staffed Woodmere, for instance, one of the things leading indicators we were looking for was someone who could win with the community, that would love on our community and invest in that community. And so that's what we went after, that's what we found, and we're excited with the work that Ms. White is doing uh, to bring the community back into that school. If I ask them, could I do something, it, it's not a problem. And I like that. I like that, that they see that we have parents that really want to come in and really want to be a part of and support them in the ways that we as parents should. Our parents really need to be educated. And I don't mean talking at them. I don't mean just throwing stuff at them. Curriculum and standards and benchmarks. I don't mean all of that stuff. I mean the nitty gritty. People have a real disconnect about what the expectation is for students. They don't understand what the standard is. You know, so I have to make sure that I'm educating parents too about what we're doing. So we had a fifth grade parent meeting. We had folders for each child. It had their LEAP scores from last year. It had all their diagnostic scores from this year, um, as well as their progress reports. Then we actually had them to look at like a practice LEAP test. And we got those aha moments like, 
I don't know how to help. The highest performing fifth grader scored at third grade level in reading. So what is that telling you about the level of instruction that they've received and the gaps in their learning right now? We don't have time to play behind discipline. There will be consequences for it, okay? We will also reward the great behavior because we are big on PBIS, but at the same time, kids need to understand that what we're doing here is something serious and there needs to be more of a sense of urgency about instruction and learning. The leadership here is, is really great. They're both very supportive, open to access if I have questions or comments or concerns or anything. I'm not somebody who's gonna have my door closed in my office and you know, you have to schedule an appointment with me. Everything can't wait for a meeting. I have learned more from Ms. Heimel in the very short time this first quarter than I've learned under any master teacher. I'm just here to build them professionally and to make them reflect the practitioners. We all have to reflect, we all have to have a growth mindset. We can't stay stagnant. One of my um, quotes are, when you become unteachable, unpack your bag, because you're going to stay there for a while. You're not going to grow, you're not going to learn, you're going to be stuck. And we don't need anybody stuck. If they're gung-ho and they're working hard and they're here long hours, it makes it easier for me to push up my sleeves and join them in what they're trying to do. They're fantastic leaders for us. We have a, a school pledge that we say every morning together. I pledge today to do my best in reading, math, and all the rest. I promise to obey the rules in my class and in my school. I respect myself and others too. I expect the best in all I do. I'm here to learn all I can, to try my best and be all I am. We can't hide that wildcat pride.